Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and I saw a little beef come through uh, <laughs> my social media feed between Freaked0550 and uh, Steve Shaw, Massive Iron Steve Shaw, uh, regarding genetic freaks and uh, linear periodization. And so it kind of begs the question of is linear periodization any good? And so let me put on my plus five out of weaponsmithing. We're going to scale up my crafting a little bit. Let's talk about this. Well, I guess the short answer to that, because people are going to want me to give my stance of which of these guys is right. Well, they're, they're both right. Linear periodization works. It, it absolutely works. It's time proven. Uh, so I've got to agree with Freak there. And is Freak probably a genetic freak? Yeah, I got to agree with Steve Shaw there. But that's not a talk <laughs> linear uh, linear periodization. Uh, I mean, if people really want to know, do I think linear periodization works? Look at my free programs uh, playlist. I have an intermediate linear periodization program in there for intermediate lifters. And it's still there. I've never taken it down. Uh, I've done an article on it that I've never taken down. So obviously, I believe that it works or I wouldn't put out a program uh, with it. And no, I don't charge for it. It's free. And a lot of guys have run it. So yeah, I got pretty good gains on that. Well, yeah, I mean, let's see, linear periodization with basic movements. Yeah, that's a pretty good way to get big and strong. I think that'll work pretty good. Uh, but, you know, it kind of begs the question that we get into of genetic freaks. I mean, let's be realistic here. When he has to say, oh, a guy hitting a 530 bench, 530 bench and a 650 squat, both raw, that only a freak will hit those lifts on linear periodization. It's like uh, only a freak will hit those lifts on any sort of training system. I mean, seriously, it's like I got to wonder, it's like, Steve, how many kids do you coach to get to those lifts? Like anybody you're coaching hitting those lifts, if you take someone with average genetics or slightly above average genetics, do you think there's any program you could write that would get them to a 500 plus bench and a 650 squat? I mean, realistically, without using grams and grams and grams of gear, I mean, right? Uh, like not using five grams of test a week. Because let's be realistic, you know, he brought up the little bridges in there. And when Steve and I were friends, Steve told me story about one of the little bridges pinning 10 grams of test in one go before a meet. So I've looked at the Little Bridges training programming. I don't think there's anything magical or special. In fact, I think their programming looks pretty bad. A little bit I can see. I'm not overly impressed. In other words, someone who's a genetic freak on 10 grams a test uh, could hit their numbers, you know, on their programming. But I don't think the average guy is going to do amazingly well on, on what they're doing. Uh, as far as what I can see, maybe I'm wrong. Am I seeing something wrong there? Uh, it is nothing magical or special about any of their training. There's nothing magical or special about it. So why are they hitting those lifts? I don't know. 10 grams of test plus being genetic freaks. That does seem to run in the family. There's some freaky genetics happening there. Um, that could be what's happening. Be what's happening. So it comes to the question of, though, in, in what world... Are we saying that linear periodization doesn't work? Uh, it's pretty well time proven. Now we could argue, you know, this is the argument people make that they could come up with some sort of, of undulating periodization or some concurrent periodization or something else that might give 1% or 2% better results. I, that's the argument we're making, right? Isn't that correct? That's the argument against linear periodization, that it's outdated and that there are other forms of periodization that might, in the right circumstances, uh, work better, right? There might be stuff that will work better. Or maybe you don't want to change rep ranges, right? That's part of it, too. You don't want to deal with periodizing your training at all, in which case some, some very slow linear progression might be in order, huh? Uh, messing with some AMREP stuff thrown in, different things, right? That, I kind of like that sort of thing myself. Uh, that's the direction I lean. I like slow linear progression. There are at least different phases of training, but I like slow linear progression while keeping reps pretty much the same. Um, but that's two different things. You know, it's like Steve mentioned both things. He said linear progression and linear periodization in, in his discussion. Whereas in 
Freaked only mentioned the linear periodization. So I don't really know how, how he necessarily trains, but the guy's using clearly talking about some sort of linear programming, and he's pretty damn strong. Pretty damn strong. Stronger than me. I can't lift what he lifts. I've never lifted what he lifts. Even at my best. Even at my best. Last in a fair amount of gear, and in my 20s, I could not bench or squat what he can bench or squat. Couldn't overhead press what he presses. Uh, I can't deadlift what he deadlifts. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say, uh, dude's pretty strong. He's pretty strong. But we come back to the point of historically linear periodization. I'm 42 years old. All right, I'm 42 years old. Older than the vast majority of you out here listening. There were guys competing at the world level in strength sports. There were some of the strongest men walking the face of the earth, even before I was born, who were successfully using linear periodization. They were using it in Olympic lifting. They were using it in power lifting. They were using it in all sorts of stuff uh, very successfully. And it wasn't just small numbers, right? It wasn't just small numbers. There were plenty of guys back in the day benching 400 plus pounds using that. There were plenty of guys back in the day squatting 550, 600 pounds. Yeah. Guys power cleaning 400. Stuff like that. Who were using this sort of programming? Are, are we really going to say... Are we really going to say that a lot of even this Soviet bloc programming, which was a lot of it was linear uh, programming like this, or are we going to say it doesn't work? It was producing world champions who were bigger and stronger 40 years ago. Maybe some, maybe some cases 50 years ago. Producing guys who were bigger and stronger than most of these gym rats today, stronger than most power lifters. The average power lifter at a meet today, as strong as those guys were back then. Guys on plenty of drugs, on drugs that didn't even exist back then because they didn't have the same stuff we have today. Who still can't lift what guys were lifting off linear periodization back in the day. So are we really going to say that it's, it's, it's bad programming? I mean, we've got decades, decades of observation. We have decades of guys using linear periodization. Can we argue that it might not be the best for everybody? Can we argue that psychologically it might not be the best programming for this person or that person? Sure. Could we argue that maybe we could fine-tune some other stuff that might give slightly better results? Yeah. But... Trying to get slightly better results than something that's time proven and has produced champions and has produced guys who are benching over 400 pounds, who are power cleaning 400 pounds, who are squatting 600 pounds, it's produced quite a few of them over the years. I mean, are, are we really going to say this is, this is bad, that it doesn't work? I mean, because realistically, the argument that if, if, it, if a person hits those numbers only did it on that program because they're a freak, I would argue that, again, at best case, if you come up with something better than linear periodization, you're only trying to get a 1% advantage. So, I mean, what are they going to hit that's better? So, a 530, I mean, a 530 bench press turns into a 540 on some better system. I'm going to say you pretty much have to be a freak to bench 500 plus pounds, like a legitimate 500 plus pounds, meat legal 500 plus pounds, raw. You have to be a genetic freak to do that anyways. And you probably have to eat mind-boggling amounts of it. I don't even want to see the grocery bill of a guy who benches 500 plus raw. Be realistic here. All right, you're talking about a genetic freak who has a grocery bill most of us don't even want to have, ever have to pay for. And we don't even, even need to get into the possible drugs. I don't know, then again, some of the freakiest guys don't even need that much, to be honest. I mean, there's some pretty freaky guys who eat an enormous amount of food, who have insane genetics, who get brutally strong on nothing. It does happen. It does happen. They're out there. 
But the the idea to step back and say that something that has been time proven in strength sports all at all or at the world level, right? It'd be one thing if it was, if it was just powerlifting in the U.S., right? You know, which is again almost a redneck. It's a redneck sport. It's a grassroots redneck sport. Um, but if we look at that, but then we look at what's been done at the world level, and there've been plenty of world class strength athletes who use Leonard periodization to be stronger than I've ever been, be stronger than Steve has ever been from multiple different countries and multiple different strength sports, um, if we're going to step back and try to claim that it's, it's not any good, uh, I don't know about that. That seems a little absurd to me. Of course it works. Of course it works. If it didn't work, I wouldn't even be putting it. And I have a free program with linear <laughs> periodization in it. Why? Because it does work. works pretty well if done correctly. works pretty well. Um, and I don't know. You look at freaks lifts, and then you got to step back and say... I don't know. Does, does I think it works pretty good. Seems to work pretty good. He's pretty pretty big, pretty strong. Yeah, he's fat. I know. I know he's fat. I know he's a fat power lifter, right? But dude's pretty big and a dude's pretty strong. And he's using something that's that is time proven. <laughs> it has worked for champions all over the world. Um, I don't know. I think it's pretty good. I think it's pretty good. Just my opinion. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.